good afternoon, people. It is Thursday, 547, 66 degrees. Tomorrow's supposed to be even warmer, and tomorrow's Friday. Oh, my cousin just uh, emailed, or text messaged me. Uh, it's time for the workday recap. Today was an interesting day. Uh, there's basically nothing going on, but Gaines and I received a call before we even opened. It's a emergency SOS call. It was uh, the Country Club Lakes apartment complex that we set up their network for. Uh, apparently the room that all the equipment was in also has their electrical equipment, their phone system, and uh, a hot water heater. And you can probably tell where I'm going with this. Uh, <laughs> their hot water heater blew up yesterday, I think, and sprayed water all over the phone system, the network equipment, everything. Uh, they uh, responded to it by, of course, shutting off the water supply, uh, getting towels and uh, high heat dryers in there to dry everything out. Uh, everything was pretty much dry. The network system was seemed like it was up and running, but their uh, wired network connection wasn't working. They couldn't get out to the internet and they couldn't print. Uh, so Gaines and I got there and my boss and my boss started looking at the phone system which I ended up looking at after I was done with the network. Uh, all I did was reboot a couple of things. We had two wireless routers there, one for guests and one for um, the office manager, the managerial people. And we had a 16 port switch there to connect everything and the Comcast modem. Uh, the guest wireless was working, so I knew Comcast was working. And the guest wireless router was working. Uh, it was the office manager's wireless router that wasn't working, which that 16 port switch plugs into, which is why they couldn't print. So I, we rebooted the wireless router, uh, checked all the connections, everything came back up, checked printing from each PC, everything was working. So the network was back up, yay. Now onto the phone system. Uh, their phone system, their phones were just clicking. There was no dial tone, there was nothing. There was just a clicking sound coming from the receivers, the handsets on the phones. So uh, we look, I looked at the system, traced all the cables, find out, found out how the system was hooked up. There was a main 6-6 six -six block that uh, uh, the there were six phone numbers, six lines that were broken up on that block, and then there were uh, cross connects taking it to the phone systems and um, the cables running to each phone in the offices. There was no dial tone on that uh, main block where the where the lines came in. So I trace the cable back from there, and that goes to a ad train, which um, takes the incoming circuit and breaks it up into the different lines that are coming in, and then takes it up to that 6-6 block, which breaks it up even more to wherever it needs to go. Uh, that ad train was like on the wall just behind the water heater so we think it got the brunt of the spray because when we looked at it it was just flashing red on the LED panel 
I rebooted it. It came up green this time, but as it was booting up, it kept hitting the voice and data side of the boot up process, and it would flash green, then amber, then red, then green, then amber, then red, and then it would reboot itself. So the ad train was, wasn't coming back up. Fortunately, or unfortunately, that's handled by a different company. So we had to call that company to see what they could do about getting that ad train replaced. And we think, or I think, that once they get that piece of equipment replaced, the phone system will be back up. So now we spoke with maintenance and we suggested that either they move all that e the phone system and the network equipment to another location or they move the water heater which the water heater would be more cost effective to move um, the other systems there's like three different parties including us that would have to get involved to move everything rerun cables and all that and the water heater there's an office on the other side of the building by the bathrooms that has a walk-in closet that they could relocate it to and then just run pipes on the outside of the building to it. So I think that's the route they're going to go, but it was pretty interesting this morning um, getting that call. It's not that often that you get a true emergency call like that. It was fun. Uh, after that, Gaines and I looked at a shredder one of those destroy it shredders, a big German made shredder, and uh, determined that it needs a uh, new control switch for it. So we're gonna have to order that part. And that thing is heavy. There's a special tool, special brackets that they make so that you can lift that head out of it where the cutting teeth are. It takes two people. That head is close to a hundred pounds. So it's not light. Definitely not something that one person can do. And it's awkward. It's like because of the weight, it kind of sticks in the frame. So you need two people to lift it. But uh, we'll get that fixed. We just have to order the part. After that, Gaines and I got back to the shop and we worked on getting some lights fixed for the fire marshal, um, cleaning up the area a little bit, getting rid of some old ceiling tiles, and we also looked up a uh, um, audio stereo system for that Country Club Lakes. They want to install a stereo system for the like lounge area in the clubhouse, the outside patio, and the pool. So I think we both have we both have two different options, I guess, that we're gonna explain to the boss tomorrow. But I'm really excited about mine. Depending on how it goes tomorrow, I'll tell you how that went. But right now I'm headed home, of course. <laughs> uh, I'm feeling better, thank God. But yeah, I will talk to you later or talk to you tomorrow.